This next application is absolutely glorious. It is so fundamental that if you internalize it, you'll soon forget that you're using it. It'll sort of be second nature. And if you're coming from physics, you may have seen it and used it in a more narrow context on a more intuitive level. But we'll talk about decomposition. Linear decomposition with respect to a basis. Now remember how we used to do linear decomposition for geometric vectors before. We used to build a grid. Sometimes it was a skew grid, sometimes it was a rectangular grid, depending on the vectors. And then we basically counted what square we're in. But now we'll do it through nothing but inner products. And that's kind of amazing that you can do decomposition through dot products, through dot products, strictly algebraically. And once again, the right way to think about it is, of course, in a geometric context, you will probably want to do it geometrically. But if you have that magical function, we used to call it the dot product genie. If you have something that does dot products for free, maybe you want to do that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to, in three dimensions, because this you see a little bit more when you do it in three dimensions. I will pick what's called a Cartesian basis, an orthonormal basis, where it's like this. All three vectors are unit length. Can I say unit length? Do I have length for geometric vectors? Yes, because I can take a tape measure and measure them. So they're all unit length, and they're all 90 degrees. And they're called E1, E2, and E3. Okay? And my task is to decompose some third vector V. I'm not even going to, I am going to draw it. But I'm not going to really refer to it. So here is V. And my task is to decompose V as a linear combination of E1, E2, and E3. And you may think it's silly, because clearly it's a geometric task. You've got to draw your grid, you've got to see what square you're in, and you're done. And maybe, but this is an alternative way of thinking about it. I'm not necessarily implying at this point that that's the practical way of doing it. But it's a good way of thinking about it. So we're looking to decompose V1 as a linear combination of E1, E2, and E3. So our coefficients are alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3. And so our, our task is to calculate E1, e, excuse me, alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3. OK, we're talking about dot products. Why don't I dot both sides with E1? Can I do that? If one vector equals another, then this vector dotted with E1 will equal this vector dotted with E1. You guys are with me? Yeah, I think so. OK, well, E1 dotted with V equals E1 dotted, hey, don't forget that, with alpha 1 V1, excuse me, alpha 1 E1 plus alpha 2 E2 plus alpha 3 E3 Boom. OK. Now we're going to do some algebra with dot products. And before you do algebra with dot products, you have to hesitate for a moment. You have to ask yourself, are the rules that I'm about to use true? Are they true? Like, for example, did it matter that I wrote E1 on the left of the vector on both sides? Or do I not have to pay attention to it? Well, it depends on whether the dot product is commutative or not. So before, you know, we're going to go through this and we're not even going to give it a second thought. It's the commutativity, that we don't have to pay attention to the order. But is that true? Are A dot B and B dot A the same thing? Yeah, it is true. It is true. Let me start writing it here. That A dot B equals b dot a. Yeah, of course it's true, because if we did 
b dot a, it would be the length of b times the length of a, which of course is the same thing, times the cosine of the angle between them. And cosine is this nice function that even if we said that the angle between a and b is minus the angle between b and a, the cosine kills that minus. It's an even function. So we don't even have to pay attention to the direction of the angle, whether it's plus 30 degrees or minus 30 degrees. You don't have to think about that at all because cosine kills that. So yes, it's commutative. Very good. We have commutativity. Okay, but what am I going to do here? Multiply them out, right? Am I allowed to do that? What law do I need to be able to multiply it out? What is it called? Distributivity. Do I have distributivity? I don't know. It's a much more subtle question. I'll draw it for you. Let's see. Let's see. Distributivity, I'll put it here temporarily, states that A plus B dotted with C equals A dotted with C plus B dotted with C. Let's draw if it's true. Here's A, here is B, here is C. So far so good? A, B, C. I'm not going to put labels on it because I'll mess it up. Here's A plus B. Pretend that it's straight, can you? Okay. The claim is that this dotted with this equals this dotted with this plus this dotted with this. In other words, the length of this times the length of this times the cosine of this funky angle equals the length of this times the length of this times this angle plus the length of this times the length of this times the cosine of this angle. <clears throat> Is it obvious that it's true? You're so good with those angles and this geometric picture. Like I wouldn't even venture given these two angles to calculate what this angle is. I don't think it's at all obvious uh, that it's true. Who thinks now that it's true? Raise your hand if you're confident that it's true. Okay, many fewer hands. So that's good. There should be a doubt in your head, but it is true. <laughs> It is true. So what I just said, to make it sound convoluted, actually is true. And there's a video on Lemma that proves it. And it's very easy to find. You'll find it. It's probably called distributivity of the dot product. It is true. So now I'll put a check mark here. So yes, I can multiply it out, even though it's not at all obvious. Right? You have to check it. You have to be a disciplined mathematician. You have to. <laughs> Take every step, every step apprehensively. It is true. So I will have alpha 1, I can take the constant out. I won't dwell on that, that the constant can just flow. E1 dotted with E1 plus alpha 2 E1 dotted with E2 plus alpha 3 E1 dotted with E3. Is my algebra good? Yeah, I just used the distributive law, which I have just derived properly. OK? All right. But we have specific vectors, E1, E2, and E3. So, we'll, so we can talk about what E1 dot E1 is. What is E1 dot E1? Length of E squared. Very good, because it's length of E1 times length of E1 times the cosine of the angle between E1 and E1, which is 0, so its cosine is 1. But more specifically, what is length of E1? 1. Remember we said this basis is orthonormal, Cartesian. That's what Cartesian means. Not only are they orthogonal, they're also unit length. So I ask you again, what is E1 dot E1? 1. So E equals alpha 1. Okay, good. Simplifying, it's nice. Feels good, doesn't it? Because it sem seemed like a general problem, but things are working out. Okay, E1 dotted with E2. Say it out loud, all at once. 
Zero, that's right. Because it's the length of E1, good, that's one, times the length of E2, that's also one. So, so far it looks like it's going to be one times one times the cosine of the angle between them, which is 90 degrees. Okay? <coughs> so, zero. So this actually goes away, and we can sort of document one other thing, that orthogonality implies that A dotted with B equals zero. This is yet another thing. It belongs here that can be expressed with the inner product. So this meaningless combination is all of a sudden beginning to come across as meaningful because here's another thing that can be expressed with the inner product. Instead of saying A is orthogonal to B, you say A dot B equals zero. Boy, there was a question. And what's E1 dotted with E3? Zero, so it's just alpha one. Hey, we got the coefficient. That's our goal. Our goal is to find the coefficient. That's what decomposition means. It means fi finding alpha one, alpha two, and alpha three. And we have just discovered that alpha one equals V dotted with E1. Does that sound familiar for if you've ever taken physics? That the component of a vector with respect to a basis is the dot product with a basis element. Has anyone ever heard this before? This is first you're hearing of it. Who is hearing this for the first time? Okay, I'll just say of everyone, more or less. But only if the basis is orthonormal. All right, so if when the basis is orthonormal, then all you need to do is dot V with E1, and I'll just really butcher it and say alpha I equals e, V dot EI, right? Because it's true for alpha two and for alpha three. You just dot it with a corresponding element in the basis. All you have to do is dot it. And you might say, well, that sounds silly to me because if my basis is orthonorm orthonormal, I can just look at it, right? Just, I can just drop that line and measure it and that will tell me the component, right? It's so easy to do with respect to an orthonormal basis. Imagine this is one vector, this is another, this is, vertical is third, and if my element vector points this way, well clearly, hey, it's four inches. That's my component. That's not the point. I'm not saying that you have to call on your dot product genie, or always call the dot product function if you're a computer science major. What I'm saying is that it's possible to express the component with respect to the basis simply through the dot product. So yet another thing, probably the most fundamental thing that you can do through the dot product, which is linear decomposition with respect to a basis. Amazing. This seemingly meaningless combination, experience shows if it's a geometric concept, excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. If it's a geometric concept, it means you can express it through the dot product. Okay, let's generalize this a little bit. What if this, I'll just mess up this picture, okay? What if this basis was still orthogonal, but no longer orthonormal, there? It's no longer orthonormal, still orthogonal, but they're no longer length one. Does the concept still work? Yes, the only correction will be, look like this. I will just have to divide, instead of saying that E1 dotted with E1 is one, now E1 dotted with E1 is, you'll be surprised, is E1 dotted with E1. It is what it is. You don't have to say length squared of E1, because our whole goal is to go away from length and towards the dot product. So you'll just say that it's V dotted with E1, divided by E1 dotted with E1. Oh, EI. So now I'm going to change 1 to I. So nothing's really changed. Nothing's really changed. Just a little bit more complicated. Okay. You guys see it? Now what if the basis wasn't even orthogonal? Can you still do it through nothing but inner products? Who says yes? 
<clears throat> Who says no? Okay, so statistics, 10 yes, everybody else abstained. <clears throat> so you are all right. You can still do it. It just won't be a simple expression like this. It will be a far more complicated expression involving lots of other unit products, E1.E2, E1, .E2, E1 to all of them. It will actually be much prettier than you expect. So maybe I'll make it your homework to figure out exactly what will happen if the base is not even orthogonal. 